Hello, Identity 5 gamers! Today, I am longingly looking out the window into a better future. I'm just kidding. Today, we're gonna be looking at some of my rank matches. All right, so we're not wasting any time. We're gonna jump right into it. Here is the first match. I am playing as Antiquarian. Got the blue bell, blue skin. You know how it is. We've got Journalist, Prospector, and Officer on this team. Uh, so here we are. We're gonna be watching from the Hunter perspective since I don't really do too much in this match, but we have five matches to watch today. Two of them are losses. One is a draw, and I think two are victories. And uh, this one, I, I guess I won't spoil it, uh, but I want, I want to show some of the losses just so I can kind of look at um, some things, just so I kind of give advice to, uh, I guess, myself, or sort of like look at... All right, so first off, we don't... Uh, well, yeah, you know, I've, if that was me, I maybe would have dropped that as well. He was smart. I think that was just a good mind game. Uh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, he should be dead, right? No, good repel. Oh, but it repels him. That's so unfortunate. Ooh, if that was me, though. If that was me. Okay. So, okay, Kite, so far. He actually has Patroller, as you can see here. So, no blink is happening. Flywheel is that. Beautiful flywheel. And he's got this pal to work with. Can he beat the pallet mind game? Oh, nice, nice. But now he jumps over. Wow. He actually got that instantly. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, if that was me, I probably would have crossed the pallet immediately the second I saw him jump. Because um, I knew he doesn't have enough presence to uh, do the smackdown. So, yeah. So here, here's where I think the match really went badly because first officer is stays on his cipher for a bit. Um, yeah, so if, if you are the rescuer, right? If you are the rescuer, do not do this. Do not do this because you give plenty of time for the hunter to cut you off. And so here, here, here's what we can see, right? He pulls out the patroller and since it's a Lucino with uh, some presence, uh, he actually does latch onto the officer. And as you can clearly see by the prospector's chair time, he is not going to make that. He definitely has accelerated chair time. Um, so he, there's not making that. Get the smackdown hit and gets the hit with the watch. So this is when I think I start moving in because I realize, oh, I got to move in. But then I realize, oh, guess what? Because the rescue failed, he's also cutting me off. So I can't do anything. I have to rely on journalists who is also not moving in. Um, in, a, in a point like this, everybody should be moving in. Nobody should really be decoding. Um, but I, I'm continuing to decode because I'm like literally just trying to distract him. But I obviously can't do anything. I can't go for the rescue. Um, so... If I go for the rescue, he picks up officer and he tries to hit me. So that's that's what I was scared of. That's that's what I was scared of here. And obviously I could hit him, but he was like kind of in like an open area. So yeah, it, it was kind of it was kind of scary. It's kind of scary. So we they they chair officer here, um, and then I'm like, okay, well journalist has tied. She's got the doofy. She should focus on getting the uh, the rescue here. So she kind of just is sitting here. Um, again, getting cut off early is not great. Uh, but she's gonna want to actually use her uh, her little doofy friend here, the little rescue doofy. She's buying time, buying time, as you should. Gets it a little bit further, not going for his jump, and this that just goes for the hit. And then here's where she does something weird. Um, yeah, she just has doofy go for it, and then also gets hit. So I'm not really sure why she used the uh, the little doofy there, because I'm pretty sure she could have got the rescue off anyway if she just full sent it. And then I thought he was gonna try and swim me, so he's patient there. I get the body block. Um, but then he goes for the jump, so I have to use Flywheel to avoid it. And then this is where I do something stupid, where I just, what, what, what my thought is, he's like, okay, if he picks up Drillist, I swing and hit him, right? Um, but if he, if he jumps, I, I also just, like, um, have to avoid it. And then I forgot about Patroller here. So what I'm trying to do is, like, his first officer has a long chair, so I'm trying to just delay the match, uh, which is just giving Drillist time to self-heal, but then he Patrollers me. And then at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of dumb because then he can just do this. I can't swing in time. So he literally is just standing here. And it all comes down into if I can get the swing properly, which officer's gonna die, so I have to go in now. And he knows that, so he just kills me. Yep. So yeah, that that was just really bad on everybody's uh, everybody's front from the entire team. So yeah, that was that was just rough. That was just rough. There wasn't much I can do there. It, it's just GGs, bro. It's just GGs. It, it's so fun. It's so funny how one stuffed rescue can lead to this, dude. That's that's how funny it is. Um, anyway, so if you're a rescuer, always get off your cipher the the the, the, the second somebody gets down. That way you can get closer to the chair. Um, and don't get caught out early if you are the dedicated rescuer. Now, next up, we've got a match against a Nightwatch here, rocking the same skin, not that we can see it, um, and accessory that I do as well. Uh, Batter is, for some reason, taking a little bit to move, which I guess is fine, because he's also was not spotted. Um, so I'm, I'm playing Gardner here because Gardner was like a last second pick, because uh, I was looking at the other three teams. I think nobody had Tide, so I think I actually have Tide Knee-Jerk Gardner here. Um, actually, I think the Batter may have had Tide. I don't remember. I can't remember what the batter had, um, but obviously he is gonna go after the batter here first. And really, I don't really do too much in this game. I just thought there's like there's like one instance why I saved this game because it was kind of funny, um, and it actually did help out. I think 
At least a, a decent amount. So he actually brought excitement just for the battle, which I thought was really interesting. Um, which I was not really expecting, because I don't I don't think many people bring excitement for batter, right? Because most of the time, you just like, if you're really that annoyed by the batter's ball, you just hit the balls. You, you literally just hit them. So yeah, absolutely garbage flywheel there. Um, <laughs> it's fine though, it happens to the best of us. Flywheel truly is something funny. And yeah, so that was kind of obvious um, because yeah, you're, you're obviously trapped there. If you go around, Nightwatch can mind game you. And he heard the breathing from the batter, so he knew he was behind it. So obviously you would just swing. Um, yeah, so that wasn't like a bad kite or anything, but uh, just some like little itty bitty mistakes there. And then Thief, who actually, oh yeah, that's right, the Thief has Todd, never mind. I don't know why I completely didn't look at it. I don't know why mine is hidden. I think I actually have that set to hidden. Um, just because, like, I have a lot of stuff on my account set to hidden so people don't hack my account. Uh, so I, I just I just play it safe and keep everything hidden. But anyway, yeah, I, I think I have Knee Jerk tied on this. Um, but the Thief obviously has tied, so he wants to go for the rescue. I'm very far away. I'm just, I'm like sitting over here decoding. I think I just finished my set. We're going to finish the middle one now. Um, but yeah, the Chitter is here first, and... Oh, it sucks here. She actually flywheels that butt is gonna rescue at 51. Yeah, that's that's what sucks. It's, uh, like, it, it's so funny, this session, this is all like yesterday and the day before. Uh, it's so funny that like everybody in my rank matches uh, yesterday, they were all like saving at 51. It was so annoying, dude. It was so freaking annoying. Like I know you don't want to risk getting Terra Shock, but like at least try to save before 51. So it misses the ball there, unfortunately. But he can drop the pallet very, very fast. He is in rage mode, so he does have a, you know, pretty solid kite. Look at that was a slow vault. That was a slow vault, by the way. That's that's how good batter's vaulting is. Look at that! Rage mode vaulting is insane, bro. It's actually insane how unfair it is. Oh my gosh. And then a, a perfectly timed excitement, keeping it in his back pocket. And what's so sad is he was at 23 cheers. He was actually so close. Was so close. And what I tried to do here is I tried to break the chair, realized that I'm gonna get Terra Shock. I couldn't make it in time. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I sh what I should have done is I should have done it sooner. And yeah, I'm a sorry pinger. I'm sorry, Zeus IDV, for watching this. I ping sorry sometimes. But at least I don't ping you on your own, okay, buddy? <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But yeah, Cheer is here using her little beep beeps. And since I, re I realized something here, I realized something here, right? I, I think I do go back to break that chair. Okay, she loses the mind game there. But I think I do go back to break the chair here. Um, I think I did it earlier. And I realized that, oh, there's that chair gone. So he's going to go to this chair. I think there's a chair over here that he can go to. Nope, he can't go to it because he knows it's broken. So he's going to try and chair on this chair, which I was thinking about breaking. But I was like, nah, if I'm chair there and running full uh, full struggle, she can make it, right? And she struggles just barely because I broke the chair. Yep, gardener things, dude, just gardener things. So I was really happy about that. Um, and she's actually able to get to the god kite area and uh, drop the pallet, I think. Yep, drops the pallet right there. And I don't know if she kites any longer than this. Um... She doesn't, no, she doesn't. But what I do is I, I think I just came, I, I, yeah, I just broke that chair and now I'm moving over to break this chair. So he literally has no chair uh, that he can go to right now. Yeah, see, they're, they're all broken. So he tries to go over to this one, but it's broken, dude, it's broken. So we're buying some time and Thief is still on the cypher. So I'm coming back over to help the gardener. Um, and I, I can't I can't break the chair in time because obviously my little toolbox is on cooldown and I wouldn't be able to get there in time anyway. But since I have Tide, I just go for the instant rescue because the the side to be ready. I get that, and I just like literally go for the instant rescue. What's funny is I just try to break the chair as well. So I get the body block, I break the chair, and then he hits me for some reason. So I'm just like yeah, focus on the coding because he just hits me and I have no BT. So yeah, boom, there we go. And then at that point it's like a guaranteed draw. So yeah, it was it was like a. Uh, yeah, an interesting effort because obviously if he chaired the cheerleader um, and then he could have pressured the cypher after that uh, if he had a little bit more time but luckily uh, she did not get chaired so it got us a little bit of extra time and that's just what I love like I, that's why I love Gardner um, late game I guess harassment you could say and unfortunately she does miss her flywheel there if she was able to loop that pallet just a little I think she mind gamed it a little too hard if she looped it she could have, uh, I don't know, mind gamed a little bit and maybe got dungeon. It probably wouldn't have happened though, because she she would have needed to do that for like another 15 seconds. So I think she would have died anyway. But it does end up being a draw, which is funny because he has to break, he has to fix the chair again. Oh, it is so funny, dude. So if she struggled for you a second time, that would have been goaded. But unfortunately, that is not the case. All right. Next up, we have a very intense match here. So I actually opted to play lawyer here because I figured it was good for the team. Um, I've kind of been picking people in rank that are just good for the team, and I realized, well, Ford has really, really slow uh, decoding. A journalist has slow decoding. Um, so I feel like we needed some accelerated decoding here, so I decided to pick Lawyer, who's the best decoder, obviously. Um, so Journalist is taking the first kite here. 
Um, and I was like pretty cute. I was like really worried because honestly, most journalists in rank that I get cannot really kite for that long. Myself included, I'm a terrible kiter with journalists because, um, yeah, get it, getting the doofies, like, they, it's just really hard. It's really hard, dude. I can never seem to get them proper like this. On our, I either do them too early or too late, and if I try to time them, there's so many hunters that I go up against that just have fast attack speed that I just won't be able to get in time, so. Yeah, Joss is doing a good job of trying to avoid the, uh, the harpoon here. But I just want to say, this match goes on for a while, and it's actually a very, very intense match. Um, I, I was actually really happy with this match, uh, regardless of the result. Um, but she goes for a little doofy here, which makes sense. And so she just is playing it patient here. So what she should do here actually is bait the Doofy to throw it down and then just break the pallet. Uh, or just do that. Hmm. Or just do that. That was actually kind of goaded. Never mind. Never mind. Or just do that. <laughs> or just do that. That was actually kind of crazy. I can't even lie. That was actually kind of crazy. So that's that's how you know this person plays Nyad. I'm pretty sure this was a A badge Nyad. There was like uh, one eyed Cyclops. Um, yeah, one eyed Cyclops A badge Nyad. I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah, they opt to patroller the forward here, which is actually a really good uh, trait for camping here. Um, and actually, ch chasing the drones here is really good because obviously it eliminated one of the tide users here. And she is going to be able to get the hit on the forward here. Trying to trying to water him off first. Luckily, he's able to get to the use the ball. This forward was actually goaded, bro. This forward was actually goaded. So drops that, tries to water off, uh, does not get it successfully, and he tries to ball all the way to the drones, which I was crazy because look at this. He actually barely gets it, just barely. This forward was actually goaded, bro. This forward was actually goaded. So trying to water off here. Enchantress is here as well. Just getting so much water. And I'm just sitting here. I'm just on the other side of the map, like decode. I'm like, oh my gosh, bro. Also, yep. Journalist, great character, guys. Great character because he just body blocks, dude. Body blocks, yep. Um, so I'm just sitting here working on the middle cipher. And then journalist kites on the cipher, which is not great. But to be fair, she doesn't really have anywhere else to go. So it's fine. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, but she does get water pop there. Um, yeah, because now, 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 now with Naya, like, being close to full press, it's a little scary. And she chairs on the Cypher, which also sucks, uh, which actually impacts this match a lot in the future. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, I can go for the save, but honestly, I was, like, kind of often to be like, no, nah, I shouldn't go for the save because I'm the lawyer. I need to start decoding. We are behind on Cyphers. Everybody else isn't on a Cypher, so I just opt to go to the Cypher uh, while we're just camping out the journalist here, so... Yeah, a bit unfortunate that she chaired on a Cypher. I would have really liked to get that Cypher done in time. Um, but we have one at 81, and I set up a new one. So our Cypher frog is actually looking, like, okay, if we take a look here. It's it's not the worst, right? It's not the worst. Because one's about to finish. The one right here is, like, at 60. Um, Ford actually does get a really, really good rescue here. Gets a chair hit. Barely getting the rescue. Like I said, this Ford was goaded. Does take a hit for the journalist, as he should. Still has some ball left, and she can kite this out going toward factory. But it is a full prez night, so it's not going to be easy. Has one little doofy left. Um, can she get it? No, she can No, she cannot because journalist is so good buff journalist actually dude So stupid dude. I, I hate journalist versus Nyad bro I actually hate it so much because like Nyad when getting out of slipstream and you press the the little doofy He's like behind you because she's so ahead So she gets like a little bit of speed boost while she's pulling back the spear and yeah, it, it's just so unfortunate But enchantress does actually uh, stun but of course stunning balloon st balloon dropping with enchantress isn't great forward comes in being the goat that he is um, but yeah, just it's he's just delaying the inevitable at this point. So I get the cipher done. So last cipher is right here. It is right here. Um, so that's a bit annoying because Enchantress is pretty much dying on the cipher. A journalist does go down. Um, but the cipher is pretty far along. So Ford and I opt to heal up, but she's coming over here, so we can't finish it in time. Um, and then she thought about getting a little gritty, trying to go for some hits here. So at this point, it's like a little tricky to figure out what we should do here. Because obviously, I want to work on the cipher, but I have to rescue. Um, so at this point, yeah, she's trying to go after the four, get him down. So once I realize that, I go back for the rescue. She pulls back her harpoon, so I know I can get it in time. Um, I've got no water, so I can safely do the rescue here. I realize she's going to try and do the trick, so I pull back. I kind of I kind of like want to stall it out here, right? She's doing the trick. I hate this Naya trick, by the way. I absolutely hate it so much. It's so stupid. Because I don't I don't know when it triggers. And it does ha it just happens, bro. It just happens. That's why I hate that trick so much. Because it just happens randomly. And you're already like so much water. I, I hate that trick so much, dude. It's so annoying. It is such an annoying trick. Because I don't I don't know how to do it as my Naya, and yet it always works whenever I'm trying to rescue. So she completely waters off the cipher. Forward's kind of trapped, and like, yeah. So I opt to just heal up the Enchantress here because she's already seen the chair. It also does have a three stack, so she can rescue safely here. Um, so whatever, whatever the chair is, she can safely rescue because she has a three stack. Um, and the Cypher is looking good, but she still has Trump Card, and that is uh, not great because as you can see, I think she does it right around here. Um, She's gonna she's gonna swap to abnormal, which is not great because I'm trying to just kind of like th like just threaten the threaten the uh, threaten the decoding here. Enchantress is kind of hiding it out. 
They say decode another cipher machine, um, which I was like, I was thinking about, but I was like, this one's so far along, I want to do it. And then she abnormals, and I know she's gonna abnormal, so I'm like, oh great, that means the cipher's probably at like 30. Um, so that really sucks. But they get the rescue, so the rescue does happen. Um, it was a free rescue, so she still has the three stack. Ford's able to do that. Um, and while, while this is happening, I'm back on the Cypher, but it's at 33, so obviously it's um, not great here. It's not great. I know she's coming in, so I start using the map, trying to just find her location. And then I, I think I do like a little bit of an okay kite here, because what I want to do is I want to give them time to heal up, right? That's what I want to do, just give them time to heal up. I have my max speed buffs here. I know I can drop that pound in time. Um, and I know that the best thing to do here is drop this pallet, vault into her because she can't swing, and then go all the way to factory so I can get a double. I know if she hits me there, it's fine because she won't be able to catch up to me, and I can get over here to drop this pallet in time. So, yeah. I figured since factory is so broken, I can kind of just do that. And then at this point, she opts to switch targets because she knows the uh, the cipher is being worked on again. And they actually opened up a new cipher, which is good. Issue is, the last two ciphers that we're working on were kind of cipher locked with, so... The best, the best thing for us to do here was probably just open up a new, like for me to do here is probably just like hope that Ford and Enchanted can kite this out, um, and like just kind of work on a new cipher. But yeah, it's not really gonna happen because like well, this is all solo ranked by the way. None of us are, none of us are in VC. If we had a VC here, this could have gone a lot better. But at this point, I was like so greedy to go after this cipher because I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if my teammates could handle it. Right? She tries to fly with the water, misses unfortunately. Uh, but she does have three stack, so it pops it a little bit early. She could have she could have waited an extra like half a second there, um, bought a little more time. But at this point, I think I'm healing up the fort. Yeah, we're, we're healing up. I don't think she sees us. Uh, maybe now she does. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna try and do the double healing there. I'm like, I'll heal up the fort because um, obviously he's just better, uh, better to heal up than me. He can go for more consistent saves here, and so I just try to get behind this pallet. I actually get the pallet stunned because she goes in it. Um, but that, that's a bit greedy from her trying to get these uh, these hits here. And what's so good is like, this is just so intense. We're all just like trying our absolute hardest, right? We're trying our absolute hardest to make this thing possible, it, which is really, really difficult. It's, it's becoming really, really difficult for this. And I almost get watered off. Luckily, I do not get watered off. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is like, if it's, I'm, my, my theory here is like, if I'm going down, I'm just gonna die, I'm just gonna die away. Like I know I'm gonna go down, so I might as well just die away from the Cypher. That was my goal, right? That was my goal, just die away from the Cypher. And um, I was thinking like, if they double rush the Cypher here, Oh yeah, and the cipher machine, cipher machine was prime here, which I was actually so upset about. This was this is where we could have had it, right? All Ford had to do was insta all Enchantress had to do was pop the cipher right now, but she didn't. She didn't pop the cipher. Um, she should have popped it right there. That was where that's what I was super mad about because she had it primed, and I knew she was standing still because I could see her. That was what I was actually really mad about because the cipher was primed, and that's what lost us the game. If she popped it right there, we would have been fine. She should have three stacked into pop or just pop into three stack. Either one would have been fine, and we would have had it. We would have had it. So. Unfortunately, that is not the case, so she's going to use her three stack here. Um, so yeah, we, we would have had it. I'm, I, I opt to open up a chest because I need an item. Four goes back to the Cypher, and lo and behold, she abnormaled it, so we can't even decode it. Yeah, so that 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 was the biggest mistake of the game right there. The Enchantress should have just popped right there because we, we were struggling the entire game just to get this Cypher done. She should have just done it because at that point, we get at least somebody out the gate, right? We at least try to get somebody out the gate. And at this point, um, I don't really know what to do anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of I kind of get a little greedy here uh, I just kind of keep trying to pressure it on the server because I know it's so close I know it's so close, but we keep dying near it And it's it's just so unfortunate because it's Nyad, right? You, you we can't decode it because she can just keep watering it off And don't get me wrong this guy was playing amazingly, but like after that enchantress goes down I knew that was kind of it right I knew I knew that was gonna be the end of the game because she's literally just like constantly cheering near the cypher and well, it's just it's just a constant battle of attrition at this point because she's just wasting down our resources. Obviously, Enchantress has the ones that recharge, but the abnormal plays were just so freaking huge. I get I get stupid here and I just try to. I actually am dead here because I didn't know where she threw the harpoon. But at this point, I'm just like, we need to get this cipher done. We need to. I'm like, I'm not working on any other cipher because this one's so close, dude. It is so close. Um, so obviously, little baby stun doesn't matter here because yeah, she drops in time and then I got chaired again. Um, but at this point, like, I don't, I don't really know what to do at this point, right? Because we just can't get it done. We're constantly going back and forth. Everybody's seen the chair, and she abnormals it for a third time. And it's like, oh my gosh, dude! If she just popped, we would have been, a, it would have been a draw. It would have been a draw because she, she uses, she wouldn't have trait. She would only have abnormal. She goes, she chases the enchantress, and then forward and I get out the gate. Or either that, or she chases one of us, we run away. It, it should have been a draw. This 100% should have been a draw if the Enchantress just popped the Cypher. Um, 
but unfortunately that just wasn't the case so yeah now that, that one I noticed is I noticed that the cypher's at 60 freaking 7 something yeah this is not getting popped and so at this point we just double rush the cypher because there's no other choice there's no other choice dude there's literally no other choice so it's I just I just opt to do this but she has another dash because it's Nyad. By the way, Nyad buff, ha Nyad buff mattered here. She wouldn't have had a dash. She wouldn't have had a dash, and then we just die. So we just surrender. Yeah, that cipher was at like 98, by the way. So yeah, I was I was really upset about that match. Uh, I I can say upset. I was it was a really good match, but I was upset that we didn't win because we were trying so hard, right? Uh, it was a very it was a very sad defeat because we were just trying so so hard, and I we definitely had it. Like if Interns just popped the cipher before I got rescued, we would have had it. I think I even said focus on decoding, but she didn't She didn't get the picture, so yeah. It was a good match. It was a good match. Uh, a frustrating defeat, but it was still a fun match for us. I, I had a lot of fun playing in this match. I really wish we could have got the draw, though. This definitely should have been a draw, but unfortunately, not the case. All right, on to the next match. We're going to be watching this Hermit match here. Um, I am obviously playing Blue Bell Blue Antique Dealer. We've got Composer, Coordinator, and Small Child on the team. So I'm watching from the uh, the Hermit's perspective here, and I realize he's chasing me, so I opt to just go behind the big boat. But he, I know he saw me, so I know he's going to predict that, so I kind of just wait around here, and then I start going back the other way the second I see him. So... Yeah, trying to, trying to just play a little bit patient here. And what I start doing is I start spinning the flute immediately. Because I've seen in tournament, using the flute for distance is far better than using the flute for stuns against Alva. Because it, do, it doesn't really matter. So I was actually a bit upset that he got that stun there. I thought I would have uh, made it in time. But it's okay. Um, but yeah, the, the, I, what, you'll see me not even go for like any stuns here. I mostly just go for... I'm on, I'm, I mainly just go for uh, flute spins and um, flips here. Because that's better against Alva. You can't really do too much stunning against Alva. Um... So he actually gets that stun there, and he it does get the first hit, which I was a little upset about, because I was like, dang it, dude, I took such an early hit against Alva. That's so bad, because he's about to have presence. Uh, so I hear this, and I'm, I'm, I get nervous here, because I'm, I'm a little scared of uh, that he'll Eye of Sauron in. Luckily, he does not, so um, I opt to just kind of loop Shack here. And I see, I'm looking behind me, so I know that he doesn't um, he doesn't do that. So I know he has a stun here. So what I think I, I think I try to flip here. Do I flip here, or do I flip next time? I don't flip. Okay, I think I go for the flip next time, next loop, next loop. Because again, yeah, it's 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 Antiquarian in 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 Shack, so she's kind of broken here. And I know, okay, he only has one stun, uh, so he won't be able to get it. So I think I flute. I should be able to flute jump here. Let's see. Do I flute in time? I do flute in time. Yeah. So I, I avoid that. I avoid that. Uh, luckily, thanks to the flute. I actually don't know if I um if I would have regardless. I'm not actually sure. But as you can see, my flute is like almost completely gone just because I've been using it just for speed, which is honestly fine. He is going to get another hit here um, through the window, which I was a little upset about once again. And then he's going to use this for distance. Luckily, he misplaces it, so I actually get a lot more distance here because he's forced to vault. If he actually made it all the way over, um, that would have been really, really bad. And yeah, as you can see, I literally have like no flute left. So I'm, I pretty much use this for a jump and I thought he was going to stun there. I thought he was going to stun there, so I flywheeled like an idiot. Um, and I flip back over here, which is honestly kind of a useless flip. But I, what I'm trying to do is just try to avoid getting stunned. That's all. And then I just get stunned anyway, so. <laughs> that's all I was trying to do this entire time is avoid getting stunned. That's what you want to do against Alva. Because that's all he has to work with. You can usually kite out Alva, especially on Lakeside. You can especially kite him out here. Um, so at this point, I'm kind of just like, you know, vaulting back and forth, trying to just break line of sight no matter what. Prevent the stun for as long as possible. Because the second he does get the stun, I'm dead. But I, So that's why I'm just trying to break line of sight. I see he's going to go for this. And I think he gets it, actually. Yeah, he gets it. I was so upset about that as well. I was like, man, I'm doing my best to dodge these stuns. I know it's coming, but he still gets me because the range is just really, really big. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know why he opts to break that pallet first. That's kind of weird. Um, so I just get I just get crawled over here. And uh, luckily, it was a three-cypher kite, which is fine. And uh, since we have a composer out there, he's actually decoding a lot faster. Um, so... Yeah, the cybers are looking really, really good. So that, that was a good kite. That was a good kite. Um, good initial kite there. But I have no more flute, right? I have no more flute. And that, that's kind of what I want, right? I, I, I am somebody who likes to kind of save their resources. You should not be saving your resources, especially if you are first kite. If you have resources, use them. Use them. Do not save them, right? Do not save them. Because by saving them, your first kite is less. Now, now here's the thing. You can save them if you think you're going to get blinked, right? You can save them if you think you're going to get blinked, right? But there was no instance in that kite where I thought I was going to get blinked. So I was fine, right? There, I was completely fine. Um, so I was a little um, wondering why she wasn't saving before half. I actually had this coordinator quite a few times. She was pretty good, honestly. But a lot of her rescues were like at 51. Um, so I was confused. Like, why isn't she rescuing here? She has tied. If I get hit during tied, yeah, she, she shoots the gun during them. That's kind of funny. Um, but I, I think she just wanted to make sure the cypher was prime, or like basically prime by the time. 
um, this happened here, so that's fine. I know the Cyber Sheen is primed here, so I don't really know why she's body blocking. What I want to do here is I'm trying to like wait to try to pallet stun him here, because I either get hit here or I put him in an uh, I put him I try to get him in a pallet stun. So you'll see me try to do like a little uh, um, pallet stun around here someplace. So I think yeah, right right over here I try to pallet slam him. I try to do like a pallet mind game because I'm like okay, well um, if I can pallet slam him here, I'll be good. So I try and then he's respecting it. Um, and I think, I think at some point I just take the hit because I'm like, yeah, there's just no point, right? There's just no point. Because uh, he's just waiting for his stuns, waiting for his stuns to come back. And yeah, he, he does just take the hit. So we pop. And luckily he has no stun. So I'm good to make it all the way to Shaq. And then because he knows how much Shaq, he just TPs onto the gate. Um, so yeah, coordinator is there. And is just going to get hit here because she decided to open up a chest, which is a little risky. You don't want to open up a chest if the hunter's going to TP you because the animation is not great. So... I suggest never opening a chest near uh, that area, especially if you think the hunter has TP. I don't think he TP'd once this game, so I think it was probably fine to maybe do it, especially since you didn't know. But yeah, just just as a fur just as further notice, you should probably avoid doing it just because it can be uh, kind of so. It actually, does get the hit um, uh, on the cord right there, um, just barely through the wall. But yeah, that this does buy enough time for the rest of us to get out here. Um, because yeah, I, th I think Composer is going to get out on this game. So he actually opts to switch targets because he knows he's going to get kited out here. Um, and then Composer, I think, just barely gets this. Yeah, just barely, because he doesn't have enough stuns. So he used up a stun, but then Composer just gets out. Um, Antiquarian, f I flywheel because I think... Uh, yeah, I was, I was trying to flywheel just to get out. Okay, so we get out, and then Coordinator gets out the dungeon. So it's a four escape. I was pretty happy about that because it wasn't rank. And four escapes in rank are pretty rare. And this is an A badge, uh, a badge tournament, I believe. So I was pretty happy with that kite there. All right, next match, we're going to be watching the Night Watch here. Obviously, I am playing Melly. Love to play Melly. Coordinator is also here, rocking the Bungo Stray Dogs uh, cord. Um,. So yeah, this this is another one where I had like a pretty solid kite here. Obviously against Nightwatch, I'm like pretty confident, right? I, I still slip up a lot of time because Nightwatch is a pretty strong character. Um, so there, there are times when I mess up against Nightwatch, but like whenever I see a Nightwatch, I never feel like, oh great, here we go, right? I'm, I'm always like pretty confident going into it. So he does actually spot me out, which I was pretty fine with because I was like, ooh, it's a Nightwatch. I know how to kite this guy. Um, so I figured at this point he probably has a couple stacks, a stacks of wind walk. He's gonna use his wind here. And I was actually really lucky here. I thought I was gonna get hit. Um, but luckily he does hit the bees. Uh, Chilliter does use that, which is fine. I didn't really need it. So I dropped the bees right here. And luckily thanks to the bee slowdown, um, he does hit the bees. Now this is an infinite loop. I know about this because yeah, Nightwatch can't catch up. I've played Nightwatch here. So I know that's an infinite loop. Um, but I, I was worried he would have had another stack of wind walk, So I come back at the pallet stun there. Um, so at this point, I know he has wind, so I'm like, oh, I'm a little scared. Why don't I just camp out around here? And what, I, what I'm scared about here is also Blink, right? He should not have winded there, by the way. Um, he was very, very aggressive using his wind walks. This is how I used to play Nightwatch as well. Um, you don't, he used up his wind walks too much, and he's constantly jumping over stuff. So he does opt to break this pout, which is good. But as Nightwatch, you should not constantly be, um, you know, jumping through these thingies here. You gotta save your wind walks a lot of time, especially at low, uh, prez. It, it can be kind of bad. So I set up bees there, um... He swings at bees. I I pull them back. I pull them back. I vault over this, and I'm kind of just like, "Yo, blink me, bro, blink me." <laughs> I kind of, I kind of just wanted to blink me here. Um, so right here, I know he has no wind. He does get the hit here, which I was a little upset about. I was hoping I could get to the pallet and mind game it in time. So right here, um, I was thinking about blink predicting, but I knew it wasn't gonna work because I was like, "Okay, okay." So he has blink. I know that. I know he has blink here, and I, I, I don't have flywheel, so I just go down. Right, I, I go down. But I force out the blink, and that's what matters. So it was a good, a good initial first kite there, uh, which I was pretty happy with. So. Yeah, it, it was a solid kite. It was a solid kite uh, indeed. Forced out the blink and all that. Um, but obviously it is hospital, so you know, hospital is broken. So, you know, <laughs> how, how much of this is hospital versus how much of this is my skill is definitely, uh, definitely an argument to be made. Um, but I believe, uh, which is funny, is I think this same coordinator here actually gets the rescue at like 51, I want to say. Which again, I was like, bro, why are we like rescuing at 51? I, this coordinator wanted like rescue at the last second, I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe maybe this match she didn't. I think I think it was a 51 though. Let's see. Yeah, she baits a chair, which I was like, oh nice. And then she rescues a 51, and I was like, bro, come on, uh, you gotta protect me now, cause now I'm dead on chair, which really really sucks, dude. It was like, really, come on, dude, you rescue me a 51? That sucks, dude. That sucks. This the thing is, I had this cord like three times, and she kept doing it. She kept rescuing a 51, um, which is really really bad. So obviously bees are kind of useless there, cause he can just dash through them. Um, so I set up bees here, drop the pallet. Um, he tries to swing, get a little bit aggressive there, but it's fine. So I pull back the bees. 
and I opt to go around here because I'm not really sure where he was going to go. Swings at the bees, and now my precious little bees are gone. So I drop here. She shoots him, which I was super happy about. That was a really good time gun because he didn't get any wind walk from that. Like I said, this night watch was a little trigger happy on the wind. He just wanted to use it more to charge up wind, which is fine. Um, that's a, that's how I used to play Nightwatch as well, but uh, it's that's not what you want to do half the time. So what I what I was um, doing here is I was trying not to kite on the cipher, but he actually goes after the uh, he actually goes after the Junko here um, because uh, yeah she gets a palace done. That's pretty funny. Yeah, like I like I said, I think the Nightwatch is getting a little too aggressive here. Um, at this point, I'm just get, I'm just digging up a chest because I know I need it, and I didn't want to kite onto the shack. Um, that's why you saw me like kind of transition back toward ruins. Even even though he was switching targets, I just didn't want to have that happen. So um, they actually turn around and go to double rush uh, Shack. Barman misses the uh, uh, she misses she misses the flywheel there a bit unfortunately. Um, actually goes for the drink, which doesn't really matter here. I'm not really sure why she went for this because the cipher machine is prime. I don't know if she knew it uh, was prime, but yeah. And she uses speed bottle, which again she should not have done because now she has nothing for end game. She literally has nothing for end game. She should have saved speed bottle for end game. I'm not sure why she didn't. Um, but yeah, it's fine, it's fine. So I think at this point he opts to teleport or something because I'm, I'm going to, the, I think he does teleport eventually. I forget, yeah, he, he teleports, so I noticed that um, and I wasn't quite right there. So he's back on me. I have an elbow pad to work with here. And I, I know he has wind, so I immediately just use the elbow pad just to get distance. That's all I wanted to do because I, I knew he had wind. Um, I stay behind the tree, like break line of sight so he can't use it. I guess he used it a little bit or too early here. And then he just surrenders here because he charge attacked and yeah, <laughs> so. A bit unfortunate, a bit unfortunate that he surrendered. I, I kind of felt bad after this one, but um, yeah, th this this is what happens when you get super aggressive. Um, I, I, I can only assume this like, the Night Watch was kind of frustrated, which I totally get. It's freaking hospital, bro. I'm always frustrated on hospital. This map is stupidly broken. Uh, but I guess just for like Night Watch things that you got, you just have to be more patient with the wind, I guess is all I could really say. But yeah, I, I was pretty happy with my kite. So I just thought I'd show that off. Anyways, everybody, that's all the games I have for you today. Just thought I'd show off some of them because I thought they were uh, pretty fun. You know, I'm grinding up my rank, trying to get to Alicorn before the end of the season. I don't know if I'll make it, but that's the goal. Um, obviously, what I am right now is the highest I've ever been. So if I can get to Alicorn, not only is that 200 more fragments, but it's also just like, yo, I made it to Alicorn, bro. That's crazy. It actually shows that I'm improving at the game. Well, sort of, because I have been carried by my rank team. But whatever. Anyways, like I said, everybody, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.